Perverse. In your face, Barbsville. Disgusting. I mean, we are calling God on a great white telephone here. <laughs> but they reveal what's really bugging us. And I mean, this is not a politically correct universe. In urban myths, third worlders pollute our food. Black eyes rape white guys. Oh. Gays do terrible things with little cuddly pets. <laughs> They chime into our deepest and darkest fears. So, let's see what we have here. Oh, oh yes, this is piss in the beer. Okay, then we have... Oh. <laughs> you like that? It's Batman in the closet. Oh. Oh. Gerbils up the ass. Apocryphal stories, strange but false. Any comments? Yes, I'd like to say something. You'll be familiar with the work of Bill Ellis? Yes, I think I'm up to speed on Bill's work. I was with him only four weeks ago at his house in Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. And how can you hold with this strange but false stuff? Ellis has shown us that the legends can generate the actions they deal with. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that Bill is a very new, inventive contributor to this field and has to build a reputation. But I also feel that, um, what's your name? James. James. The thing that we have to do, James, is collect, I want you to hear this, collect catalog and collate data that's what we need we need data and more data <laughs> frankly james ask tension smart tension tell him boy all right so this hasn't been around as long as long as you but we know these things can happen now the practical jokes the contamination stories you're making a joke out of your storytellers and trivializing their belief now hang on a minute here she's got a point charles you're not telling us you've never engaged with your material. After the shrimp, feel the tentacles of the octopus caress you inside. water into the mantle cavity and expels it to a remarkable organ, the siphon. The versatile siphon is used for reproduction, for cleaning eggs, and for squirting ink. He knows this couple. He what? What are you doing with that? I'm just going to document this. Please don't even right. think about it. Okay. All right. Okay. Right. My sister knows this couple who went away. They get home one night to their hotel room and they've obviously been broken into. They didn't think anything more of it until a week after they got back home. It was when they got their photographs developed. The very last shot on the camera was a picture of two bums going towards the camera and uh, rammed up each one of the bums was one of the couple's toothbrushes. Oh my God. Which the couple have been using ever since oh the holiday. Oh my God. I know. I do know a story. Uh, and it uh, concerns the TV presenter, Emma Freud. She got these terrible migraines, and um, they took her to the hospital. They operated on her, and they found a small sycamore tree growing at the front of her brain. And the story is that if somebody flashed their light to the gang car, the new member would be forced to blow the people away with his Uzi. That's horrific. Well, yes, but only if it's true. 
But of course, this wasn't true. Buy my book, check it out. See and you know the drill. Give the phone company a swell and call us right now. You know the number by now. We're looking for a mishmash of urban mythology. A couple of experts on tap. One more still to come. And we've been getting a lot of phone calls so far about technology. Is that a new occurrence? No, I think most people have heard stories about microwaves. Uh, basically, these stories are about any piece of equipment, any appliance that looks like it might go wrong. As, for example, the aeroplane toilet story. Now, have you heard that one? I haven't, but I've got a horrible feeling I'm about to. These aeroplane toilets work on a sort of a vacuum principle. There's a rather large lady who sits down on one of these toilets and there are absolutely vast buttocks create an airtight seal. Yes, I thought you'd like that. On the line now, we've got somebody, hopefully, with a slightly more tasteful story. It's Kevin. Kevin, 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 come in. Hello, Paul, yeah. I'm, I'm... Stand a bit closer to your phone, Kevin. Yeah. It's a mouth deal, Kevin. This isn't radio for the deaf. OK, what story have you got to share with us? Well, um, my sister told me this. I'm to a best friend. Um, best friend's hen night. They all went out to a, a strip club. And the, like, these guys apparently weren't your Chippendale strippers. These guys went the whole way. So they were there, and they were all a bit, a bit drunk and having a good laugh and all that kind of thing. Off came this, this guy's G-string, whirled it round his head for a bit and threw it to the organ. And the sweaty bit hit my sister's friend in the eye. The sweaty bit of the G-string being which bit, Kevin? The, uh, well, use your imagination there, Paul, I think. The bit of the... The gusset! The gusset, I've yeah. I've been nearly right. blinded by a male stripper's gusset. What a horrible fate. Right, anyway, right, what happened anyway, after that? Along to the doctor she went, because a, a couple of weeks later her eyes started to suffurate and it was getting really rash, rashy and loads of pus was coming out. So she went to the doctor's and he got, got his microscope out, had a look. <laughs> And he came over with a pair of tweezers, pulled the eyelid down, and took out a pubic louse from her eyelid. Well, actually, that in my book, which is called The Gang Car, that's actually called um, Spider in the Boil, and it's under category C458. He hit the ground running with a plug. We've been joined by the great, if slightly late, <laughs> Professor Charles Paulson. Well, welcome so to the show, sorry Charles. I'm late. Nice to see you. Hello. We got, caught, you know, there was the uh, mess or something. Cro it's crossing a on the wrong side it's of the street. It's a horrible mess on the front of your T-shirt. It looks as if you've had some trouble with the tomato sauce in your hamburger, or you cut yourself shaving, possibly. No, I didn't. Ah, really. uh, well, soak it before you boil wash is my advice. But now, so Kevin had a pubic lice in his sister's girlfriend's eyebrow. I was interested that Kevin, he immediately categorised your story, but you think it's true, don't you? Yeah, absolutely true, yeah. Right, OK, well, we've got Mara's with us, who is a bit of an expert in this field of uh, alien objects in the body. You're not Mara. What do you make of Kevin's so-called true tale? Well, it's the bosom serpent story all over again. The bosom serpent? Yes. It's a generic term for any legend involving contamination of the skin. When stories about people vomiting live creatures, mainly amphibians, frogs, newts and toads, and, and male stories about venomous women and toothed vaginas... Toothed and... vaginas, ladies and gentlemen listening at home. Kevin, any vagina tooth... Vagina dentata? Any vag vagina dentatas amongst your sister's friends? Oh, well, I hope not. Not that I've come across any. <laughs> Possibly not a question to be asked at this time of day, but what I do want to ask is actually, we've heard some weird and wonderful tales so far. More still to come, I hope, from Professor Pulling's book, The Gang Car and Other Stories. But Mick, what I want to know is, are these true or false, these stories? Is there any fun, well, is there a basis of truth in any of this nonsense? True or false, it's a perennial question, but I'm afraid it's just not that simple. We can't say that all these stories are definitely untrue, can we? Well, I, actually, I can. You can? Absolutely. I mean, I can, <laughs> I can absolutely say that that is categorically my opinion. Wow. And once we give them credibility, we, we're just like the lurid tabloids. And personally, I think we're no longer accommodations. What point do you want to make, Mick? Well, uh, maybe, I think I'd really like to ask whether the, the gang car and other stories contains anything about the maniac on the underground platform. B459, okay. subway maniac. Just make sure we're on the same wavelength there. He pushes people underneath the oncoming trains, right? Right, right. And you'd say that's uh, an urban legend, there's absolutely no factual basis. Cut to the chase, Mick. We've got lots of callers lined up. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand your point. Are there you is a point lurking in this somewhere then, Mick. If you're prepared to wait for it, Paul, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I'd like to point out is that um, there was a case back in 1987 of a schizophrenic who did just that. Now that you turned on his head then, because I was asking if there's a basis in reality for these stories, you've given me a true story that came out of an urban myth. It's like 
One of these stories has caused a murder. Yeah. Right, I was asking if there's any basis in fact in these things. Do you think there is, Mara, in your infestation experience, is there any basis in fact in any of these tales? Well, you have something like the guinea worm, which is a parasitic threadworm, but um, mostly in Asia and Africa in the drinking water. Excuse me, don't you think this has more to do with zoology than actual urban mythology? 